joy, which is very much a part of the Goan Catholic community, who love eating and drinking and celebrations and, you know, getting get-togethers and parties at the drop of a hat. So he has maintained this thread throughout the book, and he ends with an image of faith, uh, the, the, the cross on the wall. That's a solid wall. <laughs> it's a solid wall. It's not a crumbling wall. And the cross is there, and it's been freshly whitewashed. So, <laughs> I did indeed, I did indeed. Uh, tell us, why did you choose the title of this book called, it's called, you've called it Edge of Faith. Tell us. <laughs> One of the most difficult things, I think, to explain is a title like that, because I'm sure many of you will appreciate my discomfort in answering that question. Uh, Edge of faith, I just mean it as, as being, I mean, it's not, uh, a lot of people have also asked me, is, is, isn't the edge of faith like a bad thing? Isn't it a bad place to be? But I think we are all on the edge of faith. We are all kind of, uh, you know, at the edge of something or the other. And here, because the faith is so strong and because of the, the uh, because every, every home that I visited, there was always this, this quiet, uh, sense of that this too shall pass and this shall pass because of my faith and my belief and what has sustained me over the last couple, few centuries and sustained me, my parents, my grandparents and all of the above. And, uh, but I find now that post liberation, which not many, the, uh, which it's a word which is sort of a bit loaded I think because not many go and stake to it kindly, some do, some don't. And uh, post-liberation in 1961, I think it was, it must have been, I can't, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm still an outsider, but it must have been hard to, to suddenly, to have to integrate politically, socially, culturally, spiritually with the rest of India, which never really was an integrated history with Goa. I mean, I remember coming here 15 years ago, and even, I'm, I'm not, you know, not even that, even five years ago, you know, if I would accost somebody, you know, as, as a stranger and he or she would ask me where I was from and I would say from New Delhi and uh, the retort to that would be, oh, you're a foreigner, you're coming from abroad. So India has been uh, more on the periphery of the Goan imagination in more ways than one and vice versa. I don't think, you know, it... It has never been absorbed into the mainstream of Indian thinking in, in all the ways that uh, I just outlined above. So I think it's a difficult time and uh, maybe because that, that kind of uh, duality that now has to be confronted that brings them to an edge of something, and in this case, the edge of faith. I don't know if that answers the question very uh, articulately, but I'm not a man of words. I think, I think Prabhuda is right, because um, my favorite poet, Mary Oliver, said of the act of creation, she said, whoever made music of a mild day, said the blades of every crisis point the way. So all artists, all creative people create through a sense of tension, through a sense of ratiocination, through a sense of things being balanced or unbalanced on an edge that gives their work that edge. So um, I think that's what Prabhuda, of course, captures in his work as well. And um, there's a poem in his book written by... Um, I have the name here, um, Sukrita Paul Kumar, in the middle of the book. And it's a wonderful poem, very short. It says, each time I look back, open the locks, enter the room, clear the cobwebs, I see more, but hold something less in my hands. I think, in, in a way, that those five lines really... Uh, articulate in a way that I would probably not be able to do with 70 images in a book what this work is about.
Thank you, everybody, for being here this evening. And uh, thank you, all my friends. Is Clement and Arlene here? These are the two stars of my project. Where are they? There they are. Without their help, none of this would have been possible. They were the one that began it. I, they took me. They introduced me to people. They formed the network. They were my. They were the life and soul of this project. Uh, Savio John, is he here? Savio? No, he's not here. Biri Sodi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and so many other friends. And uh, thank you, Divya, for hosting this evening. Yeah, no, yeah. I think now we are ready to deal with questions, if there are any. Otherwise, we can always go to the bar. No question. Did you give you the inspiration to do this, or had you planned it before? The lady asked, uh, she didn't have the mic for part of the question. I don't know if everybody heard it, but she said, did you uh, come to Goa and start the project, or did you already have it in mind to do a project in Goa? Well, the answer to that question is that it's yes and no, because I have had a house in Goa for the past 14 years, but I've never really lived in it. It's been a holiday home for me and my family when they came to visit, or for friends, you know, relatives, anybody that wanted a place in Goa, that was the place to go to. I only moved here three and a half years ago, but this project actually got underway a little before that, and it started uh, two ways. It Firstly, I... I've been coming to Goa for almost 20 years. But I've been coming for reasons of, like most of us are here for, sun, sand, uh, you know, beautiful weather, all of that. And it was only when I started living here that I realized that I was in the middle of a community that I didn't know very much about. So this project really started as a sort of tentative way to get to know my neighbors. It was, uh, and it was also in the middle of that, and because I'm intrinsically shy, I, I needed a commercial project to kickstart this, this project. So it was, I did a fashion project. I also work as a fashion photographer. I worked on a fashion project about five years ago, which involved using local Goan boys and girls and the houses where they live. And when, in the, sometime during that project, I got fascinated by what I was seeing, and so from there it just led on. It was sporadic, it was not consistent. I would not work for three months at a stretch, then come back into it, then do a few pictures, go out again, so it was really like that. Anybody else with any questions? I'm sure there would be questions. This is Goa. <laughs> Sasha, are you here? Where are you? Can I see your beautiful face? This is another lady with, who helped me tremendously through the whole project. Thank you, Sasha, and your family. I hope your parents are here. Are we done? Shall we get on with the business of drinking? <laughs> Okay. Uh, I know quite a few photographs of Calcutta, where you see a lot of dilapidating British constructions, starting from Bada Bajar and in the Bhavanipur area or whatever it is. But there you see only the buildings. There is no authentic life behind it. I don't know if there was sometimes some books, because India has quite a few of these things. There was a book by Raghu Rai. Oh, yeah. There was a book by Raghu Rai, which I'm sure uh, many people here would have seen about Calcutta, which is really one of my favorite books. But again, maybe you're right there, that if I remember, if I look back and think about that book, there wasn't so much of uh, an interior space. It was more 
on the… Uh, maybe that's what I was referring to earlier, you know, that it is difficult in cities like that to have access to somebody's intimate and private, you know, life. And uh, so maybe I'm blessed that way that I was able to, you know, have that here.